Hey everyone, we are back here on our YouTube channel, so thank you for being with us. I know you don't see my face a whole lot, because I'm busy with our Real Estate Invest Her show, but this week um, I have, you know, I'm here to share some nuggets with you. I have Anna here, Kelly, and if you'd like to introduce yourself, uh, before she does that, she was on show number 78 of the Real Estate Invest Her show. So if you're a woman out there and you have not listened to our podcast, you're missing something wonderful. I'm biased, of course. A little bit, but I do. I, we're really passionate about interviewing amazing women like Anna and all the women we've interviewed just to showcase that women uh, can be amazing investors. And Anna's story is so like fascinating and inspiring because everyone thinks like you just wake up and it's really easy and you have all these units and it didn't it didn't work that out. That wasn't how my husband and I grew our portfolio and it definitely mm -hmm. wasn't the case for Anna. So um, I just love Anna's story. So definitely check out that episode. But we want to spend some time today, um, Anna, why don't you introduce yourself briefly, and then we have a couple things we want to jump into, um, so if you don't mind, for the viewers listening. Sure, so the short and sweet version is basically I worked full time, um, I've been in the corporate world for 25 years, and over the last 12 years I've really focused on growing a real estate portfolio, really with the plan to work myself out of my day job to be home with my kids. And lots of ups and downs happened, lots of changes in the economy, and it took a lot longer than I thought it would. But I was able to basically build up a multi-million dollar portfolio, replace my six-figure income from my job, and I just finally retired in May. Yay. And now I'm a full-time real estate investor and have really transitioned from the small multifamily units into focusing on much larger multifamily units, both JVs and syndication. Awesome. That was very succinct. You are very good at that. <laughs> you know, you got that. Like, I'm like, that was very succinct. I think if someone asked me what I did, I don't think I'd be as succinct as you. But, um, but I love, I really want to jump into a little bit of your story of like the transitioning. Because, the, you know, many of you listen, not listening, excuse me, many of you watching, I'm so used to podcasting, so I'm just always <laughs> with a mic. Many of you watching really know that you have some um, you have some units, you have some a small portfolio, you have even a large portfolio, but you're maybe doing a lot of it yourself, or uh, you're on the active side of the business, maybe you're flipping a lot of properties, or you've been doing a lot of wholesaling. And I know there's a lot of um, folks you know that watch our YouTube channel that are like that. But you want to scale into something maybe a little larger, maybe a larger multifamily, and it can be scary. And it also it's a sometimes it's a huge transition of it's investing. But there's different team members. Sure. There's different things you need to know. The financing is, it's, it's not like you probably could just bring your own money to buying a hundred unit, unless you have millions of dollars, which is awesome. Uh, but many of us don't. So we have to build teams and, and syndicate the deal. So for you, what were the few key things that you did to prepare yourself to go from, you know, maybe smaller deals to getting into larger multifamily? Sure. So primarily I knew Liz as I was building up my five-year plan. So I had a five-year plan to exit my job and to be able to live on my smaller rentals. So at that point, four years in, I had 60 units of my own okay. um, that we didn't really JV. They were just hours yep. cash flowing. And so that gave me enough um, confidence to be able to leave my job and know that if I never bought another property, we would have our needs met and we would be um, content in terms of, of our living expenses being covered. Okay. But I always had this desire to go into larger multifamily and I didn't have money. So like you said, you know, in the beginning, it was all blood, sweat, and tears. It was mm -hmm. all sweat equity. We managed our own properties. We painted our own properties. We learned nuts and bolts, everything about being landlords. And literally I did everything myself other than my husband did the rehab and my husband did maintenance stuff. Okay. And so I am thankful that I had learned all of the, you know, everything end to end, got really good with the financing and creative financing. And then I just thought, okay, now I need to buy bigger. So I'm going to have to learn to give up control of certain things and to find partners that were also equally successful in some area of real sure. estate where we can leverage. Um, and you and Andressa have talked about this too, but being able to leverage a partnership where we had different skills, mm -hmm. where we worked really well together and we had that same vision. And so I had been kind of watching some investors um, and I had someone reach out to me and said, hey, I've got a realtor that works for me. Mm -hmm. uh, he had 12 realtors and he said, she's a woman and she's trying to grow her real estate portfolio and I want her to talk to you. So they took me to lunch and I was giving her some ideas. And in that conversation, I found out he was going to start getting into bigger multifamily. And I said, well, why, is she, why are you bringing her to me when you're already doing this? And he had 200 units of his own. Yeah. He said, because you're a woman. It's different. We have a family business. You're doing it all yourself. And sure. she's starting out. So through that conversation, I said, you know, I want to get into larger multifamily too. Let's talk again about that. So we just had lunch and we said, you know, he's got a back office and a management company already mm. in place that manages his 200 units. 
and I was doing everything myself. So I knew that in order to scale, I was going to have to put myself out there, yeah. create trust in someone, and see if we could find a, a, a deal that would be a good partnership sure. and teach us whether this was going to be a good, you know, a good partnership. And so I found literally about two weeks later an off-market deal. Awesome. And he's the first one I contacted. I said, listen, yeah. we just talked. I happened to find an off-market deal. I need... And how large was that? Uh, 73 units okay. with 44 storage units. Okay. So I said, it's a six and a half million dollar purchase price. I need about two million dollars. How are we going to find yeah. the, the investors? And yeah. he said, you know, I've got an investor we should take it to first before we think about syndicating. Both of us had done some small JV partnerships, um, but we hadn't done a syndication. Yeah. So we took it to the first investor, and he was willing to fund the whole thing. Oh my God, so that's awesome! We <laughs> and thankfully, that is super cool. Because of my experience on the smaller ones, he yeah. was able to see that I had become successful doing it. Yeah. That I had done soup to nuts, all of the things, yeah. and he already had a relationship of trust with the my partner that I brought in. Yeah. And so the three of us were able to figure out, yes, this is going to work, and we did it together. Yeah. And once I had that first deal, I knew the power of the first larger Sweet. deal. And I thought, I'm going to have to learn to give up some control. There was lots of back and forth negotiating into, I want this much of the partnership. I want this much of the cash flow. Sure. And part of me was like, I don't have to do this. I'll just do it myself. I'll just, you know. Do yeah. And I realized I've got to give up control and be able to find better balance in my own life because I'm relying on other people to take on certain pieces right. and not have to do it all myself. So, yeah, so thankful I did that. And from that, we've now bought a second property together, a 31 unit. Great. And hopefully today we are signing on a PSA for 96 more units oh together. Oh my gosh, you're, you're rocking rolling. So it was really just taking advantage of an off-market deal, being able to trust the process and to find people to do it with. Yeah. And and it just opened up a whole new world of, of a different level of investing. And now yeah. I'm you know working on my first syndication on much larger complexes in Atlanta. Awesome. And just really excited to scale based on all the things I learned in the process of the, the small ones. There's no there's no right way to do any of this, yeah. but your path makes so much sense. So if there is a right way, <laughs> you know, like to, in other words, like you know, the folks watching, you know, we want things quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to go and buy that hundred unit, right? right? A lot of people will will get into this like I just want to buy this one building and be good. You need to build your track record if you're going to have someone partner with you and give you the $2 million of equity, they are not going to do that with someone who has not closed and managed a deal right. before. Not a deal, but actually has a track record. Right. So, you know, a lot of things that I'll always say, and my husband's always, you know, wrote in his, wrote his book and we preach is you've got to get a track record. Right. You have to build your track record. So you might get into a duplex and go, no, this is not big enough. I want to get into the larger stuff. No, you need to learn what to do. And you want to learn on the small ones where yeah. the dollars at risk are not as big and where the, it's not other people's money. So I learned so much from failures and hard things that happened that I could not foresee in my smaller ones that it made me a much wiser partner and a much wiser investment now when I'm bringing people to deals. I'm very confident to say I know that I have the confidence to be able to execute this and to make you a solid return. Yeah, and that's and that's really like you're, you're, that's everything, right? right? The person that's bringing the money, whether it's one or it's, you know, for, for some of our projects, we've had 40 investors, right. a lot, because we right. have a lot of, you know, smaller, mm -hmm. smaller amounts, which is, um, you know, however you get there, the goal right. is, is right. the key, but I love that. So track record, the other thing you said too, which I think I want to make mention of the folks watching is you had a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to anyone successful, um, or it's doing, you know, doing the right thing, they're building their portfolio, they're, they're successful in this business, mm -hmm. um, everything's strategic. Everything, I mean, things do come, sometimes there's luck. I don't mean to say there's no, just like a lining of things. And I, but I believe we bring that energy to things. Right. Like I feel like we sometimes bring our own luck. Right. If and you, if you don't put yourself out there, it's not going to happen for you. Right. So, yeah, for and, sure. And you made that connection and, and said, okay, let me, let me call that person I just met. And, and you have had a lot of those things with I the have. interview we did. Yes. And just how things start to line up. Absolutely. But and I think it just, it builds on that, that momentum, not only of your experience, but who you are and, and being able to put yourself out there and build relationships mm -hmm. and doors just start to open for you as people know what you're looking for. And as you're confident enough to say, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. How can we find a win-win and let's do this together? Yeah. And being in it for the long term. I mean, you've been in this a long time. Yes. So have I. This is not something like in a few months, you're going to get 
financially free. Right. It just doesn't work that way. And the few that it happens to um, very quickly, it's generally because they already have money or they've already sure. got somebody that has a lot of money that's willing to kind of teach and train. There's them. an accelerator. And you know, when you're buying properties at the hot, you know, before it was like the height of the market, mm -hmm. after during the recovery, it's easy. It was easier to kind of make these huge profits without really knowing what you're doing. Yep. Now we're at a point where you know you've got to really be careful what you buy and not overpay. And it's not as easy to just, you know, oh, suddenly we put a yeah. team together, we found a great deal because there's so much competition. So yeah. it happens for a few that they can start out, you know, with no experience, um, but it's typically because they've got money or they've got a relationship with someone that has it. Yeah. And, and that wasn't the case for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and it wasn't the case for us either. And I think that you sometimes really get, you get, you appreciate the path because yes. you, you learn by, you know, I was writing a, a, a blog post for someone the other day and they said, tell me about some of your flips because that was the focus. It was a multifamily, it was flips, which we, I wouldn't say we've ever scaled. We've right. dabbled, but we've done, too. we've done a couple <laughs> dozen. Yeah. So I can share what I, but I'm writing all the mistakes we made, you know, yes. and I'm like telling, I'm like, yeah, we put a new roof on a property that, you know, it's just, <laughs> anyway, that's not the purpose of this video, but it was just funny because I'm like, you know, that's how we learn and that's yeah. how we grow and we can't beat ourselves up for the mistakes and that's what helps you with your track record. Mm -hmm. So when you talk to and you want to bring money, you know, investors into your projects, they're going to know what happened. What did you do when that went wrong, right? Because things right. are going to go wrong all the time. All the time. Yeah. It's not like you buy a building and it goes by plan. Yeah. Things are going to happen. Yeah. Tenants are going to move out. Some a hurricane is something out of your control, mm -hmm. in your control. Mm -hmm. So no, I really I love that track record part. I have to ask you. You have four kids. Yes. Uh, you're a mom of four. You know, you, you're you're building this this empire, which is awesome, and I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Um, you know, you genuinely know that you you know love it, and you're you're really good at yes. it. So, um, how do you how have you been able to balance it? Because you know, a lot of what I know you are passionate about is helping women. Mm -hmm. A lot of my passion is there too, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's a big question because we want financial freedom. Yeah. We want, you know, most people want the ability to do what they want when they want to do it, right? If you ask 100 people, they're gonna, most of them are gonna say that. Yeah. Um, for the people watching these videos and listening to our show, they're taking action, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They go to the meetups, like you yeah. go to the meetup. They do stuff, but then they know how do I do this all? Yeah. And, and I'm the manager of the home. Mm -hmm. You know, as women, mm -hmm. we still are. I don't care. Yeah. It's not 1950 anymore, right? But women are still yeah. managers of the home. Yeah. They're still at the helm. Yeah, uh, of and it's hard. It, so. It's hard to juggle it all and to ever feel like you're doing it all really well. And I know we talked about you yeah. know an episode like the reality of a day. You know, it's like you you try to pull your weight, you get your husband to pull weight, but things aren't going to always look pretty, and they usually are more stressful and more chaotic than you think they're going to be. Yeah. So I have all these great intentions for a while that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take time for me and I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to cook healthy and I'm not going to stay up late and I'm not going to drink Diet Dr. Pepper anymore and I'm going to, I love you know, Diet Dr. Pepper. Me too. It's my, I, I live on it. So my husband says I bleed Diet Dr. Pepper because <laughs> I lived on too much caffeine because I was working 80 hours a week, yeah. literally 10 to 12 years. And so it's one of those things that, um, I tend to do really, really well in one thing, and the other things I'm just m mediocre at, mm -hmm. but I've learned to start giving myself grace to say, you know what, that's enough. It's okay. I have a long-term vision. It's going to be really, really hard for a few years, but I know if I stick with this plan, I'm going to have that financial freedom because I'm really designing my future yeah. um, so that I can create the life I want with passive income. And so I wasn't able to give back to you know girls, like I have a passion for, for helping young girls and mm -hmm. single moms and moms just learn about finances and mm -hmm. learn to take control of their finances because I didn't have anyone to guide me, you know, and, and I've just felt so blessed. So I've always wanted to like find a way to give back, but I didn't have time to give back. So right. for a few years, it was all work, help my husband's business stay afloat, raise my four kids, be yeah. the best mom, help them with their homework, and if I and buy property and renovate. And if I had time for anything else, I would make it. But I rarely had time for anybody sure. else. So you go in these seasons of life where you're mm -hmm. just super busy. Now you know, over the summer when I retired, like it was the first time we've ever traveled as a family, mm -hmm. other than a week, you know, to Texas to see my family. So we traveled a little over a month this summer, and it was just so freeing to be able to say we are now going to reap the rewards before we go, go, go for the next level because I'm very driven. So yeah. I'm also, you know, I yeah. have this drive that I want to, I want to be the best wife and mom at night, but during the day, I want to see yeah. what I can do yeah. and do what I'm passionable about and love instead sure. of working for someone else. 
um, what you're doing, which is which super I'm doing, inspiring. But I still haven't been back to the gym since May because every day there's something, you know. And so, but I kind of gave myself that freedom over the summer that I'm just going to learn to be and and really feel what it feels like to not have to work for someone else and enjoy my kids and make up for lots of lost time. Yeah. And then when they're back in school this, you know, this fall, which they just started back, I'm, I'm time blocking my day. So the way I'm trying to find balance better than what I have, because in the past I didn't have great balance, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Now I'm time blocking my day so that every single day I have half an hour to pray, I have half. I have an hour to go to the gym. I have an hour to do something that's healthy meal prep, whether it's for lunch the next day or mm. something. And then I have six hours a day where I can do whatever I want to grow my business. And so I have like 30 minutes a day where I'm networking and yeah. 30 months, minutes a day I'm handling current tenant issues because I still self-manage 70 units. Oh jeez, my and gosh. An hour a day that I am You're asset amazing. managing my other properties. And You're so amazing. every area that I want to grow in, I'm time blocking now and I'm just making sure I get it done during the day. So from now on, my non-negotiable is at night, I'm wife and mama, and unless an emergency happens, I'm not focusing on my business. Because yeah. I worked so hard to get to this point of financial freedom that I don't want to create more work for myself, even though it could potentially bring in more income. Sure. Because I've already met that goal of financial freedom, so now I just have to do what is best for my family and just try to find the balance and see where the growth comes. And it's amazing, even in this time taking time off, the growth is coming. I've bought two more properties, I have another one coming under contract, yeah. and they've just kind of come at the right place at the right time, um, but I've been able to be strategic with my time. So I'm just learning that balance, I'm still not there yet, um, but it's getting easier and easier the more passive income I have creates that freedom for me to do what feels right at that time. I love what you said on, on a lot of levels, and I think as women we do are our worst critics. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, if people are if people are saying you know, doing one thing we were like, we're very I don't know, we are for we beat ourselves up. Right. I can use speak personally, you know, and when you're giving your attention to one thing, something else you can only focus on one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. Really. So, you know, you're sometimes we are focused on X, Y, and Z and sometimes other things are just kinda yeah. floating. But I think what you said too around having grace for ourselves, mm-hmm. with ourselves, I think, mm-hmm. is how you said it. Um, and time blocking is a phenomenal uh, way to do it. And we had a um, woman just on the show who is a time management like guru. She's done like TED Talks on time management, and the show is all about time management. She's never invested in real estate. But I'm like, I don't care. She's just going to help us with time. Yeah. And that's a big struggle mm-hmm. for her. She said, most people look at their schedules in a day, or, or look at time blocking in a day. And she goes, that's the worst thing you could do. She's like, you have to look at it as a week. Mm-hmm. 168, because when you think of 168 hours, yeah. we tend to be like, you know, you can do more here. You right. know? And then they get a little more, like, you get a little more flexible. Or like, mm-hmm. okay, I may not be able to do it on Monday. I can't go to the gym on Monday. Right. But then Tuesday. So then you give yourself the freedom and the grace right. to look at it as a week. And for right. me, um, that's helped me. So mm-hmm. then I, I'm like, I always look at my week, but giving me the, like, the, the grace of, okay, I wake up early in the morning. I'm a morning person. It's hard for me to do stuff at night. I babble at night. Um, I just, I'm delirious at night. I'm just yeah. not a night person. Yeah. So if I, you know, and I'm working on multiple businesses, working part time, trying to balance it all, mm-hmm. and you know, same stuff mm-hmm. that Anna's talking about. I get up early. That works for me. Yeah. And, but then those mornings I can't go to the gym. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. they're like, ah, oh. yeah. But that's okay because today wasn't a gym day. Right. But I know tomorrow I have it on my calendar. I'm not getting up right. tomorrow early to do right. work. Right. I'm going to go run. Right. That's important to me. And even growth, I just, now my time blocking, instead of saying, you know, I have to go to the gym, I'm going to fo- do something that focuses on benefiting my health. So now I'm like, okay, I used to say, I need to lose 50 pounds in a year, and I'm going to have to do all this working out, and I'm going to have to eat exactly this way, and it has to be perfect. And okay. the goal of 50 pounds is arbitrary. Sure, I'd like to lose that, but I know if I can focus every single day on making a healthy meal, not drinking soda, drinking enough water, and it. doing something physical, then I know I have growth toward my health. That's going to eventually, you know, cre- you know, pay dividends, and it's I going like to result in the weight loss and, and the better health. Even though I might not be able to fit in everything that I want to, I'm at least focusing an hour a day and making better, healthy choices. And the okay. same with my syndication or network. Just going to say it's a perfect analogy yeah. for those other areas. Yeah, someone, somebody brought me a deal and said, "Can you help us, you know, figure this out and do the underwriting? Will you partner with us?" And I was like. I didn't have time for this today. You know, I already used my networking time and my right, right, right. writing time. Like I just right. had this, but then I'm like, you know what? Today, I'm not going to be able to listen to a podcast. This is sure. more important. I'll sure. see where the opportunity is. 
I'll listen to a podcast tomorrow. Like it's not the end of the world if I don't get everything done, but just focus on growth and then be flexible within that with what opportunities come. I love that because you yeah. can have financial free, your financial freedom time. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't happen in a day or in a moment, right? It's so many small things, right? right. And so many tweaks and you're pivoting and you're figuring it out. I think it's also spending time thinking about this stuff, right? right. Like you're a planner, right? right. You know, you, you know yeah. and I think a lot of people get pulled, right? We get pulled in a lot of areas. We allow, excuse me, we allow ourselves. No one's actually pulling you. I hate to break the bad news. Except for the kids and the husband. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that, yeah, that's You have to do. That's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get, I get. My, my son's thing is, I want to have purple hair. And he's in yeah. kindergarten. Yeah. I'm like, Zach, you can't wear purple hair yeah. in kindergarten. Just yeah. get, up, get, get through your second day of kindergarten. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's so important with time blocking mm -hmm. and taking time for yourself, but being gentle with yourself mm -hmm. and making goals. I love that. Like making goals a little more like, this is my healthy, this is my healthy time versus mm -hmm. like, I have to do this or I have to build my passive income to right. X, Y, and Z. Because then you feel like a failure when you don't accomplish yeah. it. And even for me, I'd be like, okay, great, this is going really, really well, but in this area, I'm a failure, and in this area, I'm a failure, and I'm not making progress. So but your whole way now I is focus yeah. on just growth, like grow in every area and see where it goes and let it happen organically and Love just that. the way it's supposed to and in a more peaceful way where I'm not stressed about a particular you know, number. I'm really, I'm really focused on growth and like velocity, like grow as much as I can in the time that I have allowed um, okay. and and just see what comes yeah you know versus so attached to the end goal right the result right right um, I love it so um, I have probably tons more questions we'll be we'll be doing a lot more with Anna on our show and and obviously you know on our channel but thank you for watching before we go which is very important and where can they learn more about you and all the amazing things you're up to you said you're syndicating deals um, I would recommend the folks watching like there's we're syndicators and is a great you know resource you want to work with different people and right. you know I just want right. to recommend you so you. where can they learn more about what you're up to sure so I have a website called um, info at or my email is info at reimom.com I have a website that's reimom.com and Zenith Capital Investments is my multifamily website where you can learn more about passive investing. I have a small Facebook group called Creating Real Estate Wealth That Lasts with REI Mom, which is really anything from um, the basics of getting started into rental properties and just growing you know, slowly and strategically your, your rental property um, portfolio. Very cool. We'll put that in all the show notes and thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you.